Hello everyone and thanks for coming back to the channel. This is the URUAV UR85HD. Featuring 1102 9000 kV motors, 1.9 inch 3 bladed props, Caddx Turtle V2 but it does not have a microphone, Crazy Bee F4 flight controller with 5 amp ESCs and an OSD, comes with a power switchable VTX from 25 milliwatts to 200 milliwatts, and a linear antenna, XT30 for your battery connection, battery tray for your battery, it comes with one UR UAV 300 milliamp 3S battery, which is probably a relabeled G&B, these batteries all fit in the battery tray, it comes with a Caddx OSD control board, an extra set of props, an XT30 to PH20 connector, a screwdriver, a battery strap, a prop remover, a couple extra screws, a color instruction sheet, and a pretty nice carrying case. Mine weighs 52 and a half grams. With the Tiny Whoop 3S 333 milliamp battery, it weighs 80 grams. With the stock battery, it weighs 78 grams. With a 2S 350 milliamp race day quads battery, it weighs 73 grams. Motor post and motor post, I am getting 85 millimeters. With this being an HD unit, I do want to give us lots of flight footage to look at. We're going to start inside on a 2S flight. I am using the Tiny Whoop 2S 355 battery, so you get an idea of the machine weight as I fly around. It's not necessarily a clean flight and I don't believe I have the optimal tune for this. Uh, I had to kind of balance my tune because I was trying to get the best footage I can while also maintaining the controllability that I need to be able to fly to fly inside the house. Uh, and as you can see I'm managing it just fine. I don't think too many people would fly this inside their home uh, with it pushing 80 grams, possibly if you're running the 3S battery, which I do take on in this video, uh, it becomes a little bit of a challenge. I mean, it's something that you can strive for, but I just don't think it is all that viable for a lot of people. Uh, you may want to do it in your home. Maybe you've got some ideas of doing some sort of uh, real estate footage, maybe a nice, steady, slow cruise through the house to give some sort of uh, extra feel to a virtual tour. We're going to have a bunch of different flight footage to look at because I, I think it's important with these HD machines that you get a good feel of what you're getting into. Uh, also, I weighed all those batteries in the quick roll, and that's primarily to keep in mind that when we increase our battery size, we increase the weight and therefore we increase the load. So if you're flying outside and you're getting after it pretty good, you may find that your amp draw increases. And if your amp draw goes above, say, 20, which is 5 times 4, then you're running against that threshold, which they say it can handle up to 6 for 6 seconds, but you might not get that. You know, that's kind of a... Uh, I don't know if that's something that I would trust, but if I hit 20 outside, I would probably want to back off a little bit. Also, I don't think these props are very optimal either. I did try some 48 millimeter quad blade props from uh, King Kong. I didn't find that the flight footage was any better as far as when we get outside and we kind of cruise to see if we how much vibration or jello that we've got in here. And in most of these micros, I think there's only one that I can think of when it comes to the HD footage is kind of just dead stick steady. And I believe that was the Beta FPV 85X. Uh, some people may not uh, want to go that size. You may be looking for something smaller. And in that case, I would say I think the next best one is probably the Mobula 7 HD. Uh, but here in this video, I'm going to give you plenty to look at. I don't know if I'm going to have enough to talk about for all the different flight footage that we're going to see. On average, this particular flight is going to run about three minutes. And we're going to see that fairly consistent when it comes to the whizzy round sort of flight for this, whether it's on uh, the 3S battery that I showed you or a much larger battery. Uh, you may get more flight footage, but again, be careful with your amp draw. So if you're running a big 450 milliamp 3S battery on this and you hit you know, a punch out trying to go to the moon or do a big dive, you may find that your amp draw goes outside of the specifications. Uh, and I'm probably going to say this a lot because we're seeing the same sort of board used over and over and over again. And some people have had troubles with it. And so that's something to keep in mind. We're going to transition into a more slow and steady flight outside. And I spent several days kind of, well, I spent more than a few days. We have gotten a lot of severe thunderstorms in the area. Matter of fact, we've got one going on right now. So if you hear thunder and lightning in the background, hopefully power will maintain. And I won't lose power to this recording and have to do it all over again. But we've had storm after storm after storm. I think this is about the only day where we actually didn't have a storm come through. Sometime during the course of the day, you can see we've got a nice bright sky. It does look pretty good. Uh, but we do see a little bit of vibrations, and you'll see it in this footage. It kind of comes and goes. 
So I'm curious a little bit if it has A to do with speed of the machine, B to do with the wind and the wind direction. It is pretty calm on this particular flight. I would say the breeze that we had must be below five or six miles an hour. It had to be either at that threshold of five or six or less. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind when you're wanting dead still footage with these things that, you know, we don't have much weight. So if we have much wind, it's going to be pretty tough. Uh, sometimes a bigger battery will increase that weight. And if you're going for that slow, steady cruising flight that you may find that helps you. I did not cut the battery tray off to fly a bigger battery. But again, be cautious about your amp draw. You should be able to see that in your OSD and the goggles. This, of course, is the recording as it comes on the SD card, which you insert inside the Caddx Turtle board. And I went back and I looked at my Mobula 7 HD footage and kind of back and forth and I really couldn't tell much of a difference as far as how steady the flight footage was. And I, I have had a few messages of people asking me about this particular one, if I'd gotten it, what do I think of it. And I, I think it's very comparable and I think some people saw some videos out there where maybe they weren't tuned and that's that's kind of a drawback of those those quick reviews or, or is what I see. You might, you might remember years ago we used to see a lot of unboxing videos. Um, thankfully those have kind of gone away. But it seemed like that was kind of playing the YouTube game and I'm not necessarily cracking on anybody for this stuff. It's just was, you know, YouTube and viewers reward you for being first. Um, it's pretty rare that I'm first. I would rather spend some time tuning things and trying to show you what you can get and show you the PID tune, which I put on screen now. That way you can get a better idea of what it can perform like. The out-of-box experience is one thing, and that can be of value. Uh, but ideally, you know, we want to make improvements, and you might not have the experience or the time that you need to take to be able to tune this in to where you get good footage. And I will admit, as I said once before, I don't think my tune is spot on. Matter of fact, I think my tune actually has some deficiencies when it comes to acrobatic flight. And it's pretty severe. I'll show you that later on. Basically what it is, is if you do a flipper roll, you get a pretty big bobble in there. I, I tried to tune that out, but what I found was when I tuned that out or made that better, that my steady flight footage got worse. And what I would do is to test that is I would hover in the garage and then look at the view across the street in order to see how steady the flight footage was. I also did some dive testing, as you've seen, and I'll do more of that in the backyard. And that was just to look for that uh, yaw washout, as we've been calling it, to where the machine will kind of on its own pitch up or nose up, and then it will yaw one way or another. And that can be pretty difficult to control in flight. You may end up, you go into something that you didn't intend to, or you end up just crashing out because you don't have control of the machine. In this particular case, I would think with this tune, uh, which again is deficient, uh, I did not experience the yaw washout, uh, but again, I do have that problem with the flips and the rolls to where I get a bobble, and uh, we will take a look at that. I'm kind of running out of things to talk about. We've got so much flight footage. Uh, the slow and steady flight uh, ran about 4 minutes and 30 seconds. That is on the 3S Tiny Whoop battery. That is 333 milliamp. I did some cruising kind of, you know, I went underneath that trailer and around a few things just to kind of make it more interesting. That's not really my flight style, but... I, I try to do things that are outside of my comfort level every once in a while, too. If I happen to be quiet during any of this flight footage, it's because I've kind of run out of things to say, and oftentimes what I have to say isn't nearly as important as you just being able to see what you need to see. We did see my neighbor come out, and he took a look around. His daughter actually spent the night at our house, so she had just come across the street before that flight. Going back to an inside flight, I went ahead and decided to challenge myself. Uh, 3S flight inside. I think this is a first for me. This again is on the Tiny Whoop 333 3S battery. Uh, a battery I really like, made by My Lipo. I've got a long history with My Lipo. Their batteries are resilient as sin, and we get a chance to see a little crash there as well to start the flight. But I do finish it out. The flight in this particular case on the 3S 333 battery uh, does tend to run about three minutes as well. It's kind of a whizzy round flight, so whether you're flying 2S or 3S, you'll find the flight footage, at least in my experience, was about the same for the flight time. Uh, you'll also see that I have a little bit of an elevation control problem. You know, throttle control is tantamount on these micros, and when you increase your cell, you increase that throttle sensitivity, so, you know, it, it's, it's tough. It's not easy by any stretch, but I wanted to challenge myself a little bit, and this was a, an opportunity to do that, so I thought I would show it to you. Uh, it was fun to do. I don't think this is very viable by any stretch, 
but it was fun. As I run out of things to say, I suppose if you're new to the channel, you might want to hit that subscribe button so you can see all the reviews that I produce. Uh, the notification bell for anybody who might be subscribed or a new subscriber will help you make sure that uh, you see whenever I post something. I was recently asked about Patreon as well. I do have a Patreon. It's not something that I talk about. I think this is the second time I've mentioned it. Um, I don't encourage you necessarily to be a Patreon of me. But if you have a, a need that you want to express your thanks or, or what have you, I do have a Patreon. It link, it's linked way down in the bottom of this video description. You can go way down there. You can click it. You'll find my Patreon page. I do think I have about 34 to 35 Patreons, which I'm pretty pleased, and I appreciate all of you and showing your appreciation. You know, in some cultures, denying someone a gift is actually a good way of getting on their bad side. So I don't want to deny anybody that ability, but I sure don't promote it very much at all. The next flight that we're going to show is going to be more of a whizzy around in the backyard. You'll get to see why I haven't been doing a lot of outside flight in the backyard uh, because I have all sorts of water laying around. We're at the lower end of the neighborhood, so water tends to collect in our backyard. It doesn't help that our neighbor tends to drain his pool cover into our yard, but, you know, that's life. We, uh, we've we talked to him a few times. He doesn't seem to care. One other thing that I can mention, if you're looking at the footage and you're thinking about using some of those Caddx uh, ND filters, which I would encourage you to investigate if you're looking at a Caddx Turtle, because the ND filters will very likely help you with any sort of vibrations. But in this particular case, we've again got one of those special lenses that's not the standard Caddx Turtle size. So those ND filters won't just natively fit on. You'll probably have to 3D print out of TPU or something flexible, a ring to go around that. And you'll also probably have to shave out a little bit of the canopy, so you're going to lose a little bit of camera protection if you want to pursue an ND filter and sliding those on. I have not tested mine yet. I need to do that. I've got uh, two of the uh, N8s and two of the N16s, one's for cloudy days, one's for sunny days. Uh, so I'll get around to that hopefully soon. As we take off here, you can see the uh, trees in the background are moving pretty good. This day was actually a little bit more of a breeze than those days where I did the st slow, steady flights. Uh, you can also see some shiny spots in the lawn, and that is where uh, the water has built up. And I'm actually intentionally flying and trying to avoid that. You'll find that at the far end away from the playground, that end has a much larger pool of water, and that kind of sketches me out. I try to not break these things because oftentimes I give them away. They, they end up going to someone else and having some flying fun or experimentation with. You may find the flight pattern in this flight isn't necessarily all that entertaining to watch. Uh, you may also find that I don't do much other than just try to whiz around. I did want to show you this, but I didn't know how much longer I was going to have to wait for the yard to dry out and for there to be decent weather where I had some sun to where I could show you what the footage looked like uh, in a non-cloudy day. I have had this for about 10 days. I think it might be 10 or 11 days, and I've flown it sparingly uh, in those times, usually about five to seven flights. I did fly it on 3S a good portion of the time, except for when I was flying inside. Uh, inside, I think I only have about five or eight flights on 3S, and that was because of the, you know, that personal challenge I took of, let's see if I can manage this uh, inside to see if it's crazy or manageable, you know, just... Again, it was just a personal challenge. I'm not trying to encourage anybody else that you need to do that. That was just for me and my experimentation. This flight does show you I've got a little bit of prop wash. You'll see it come out every once in a while, the jitters and things of that nature. I think I've got my D's too high still, so if you miss those PIDs that I put on screen earlier, I'll put them on again now, and I would lower those D values by somewhere. I would start with at least five. You may want to even go further down because that's what I think is causing that prop wash. But again, I have a deficiency in my PID tune to where if you do flips or rolls, you've got some pretty big bounce back. Uh, you can fly around that if you have the skill set instead of dead sticking the flip or the roll to where you come back to center and you just try to time the stopping that you just kind of continue or you finish the flip or the roll slowly rather than trying to dead stick it or get it to just nail itself in there. Uh, so you can fly around that to a degree if you have that experience.
The outside whizzy around flight, like many of the other whizzy around flights, comes in at around three minutes, which is a little bit surprising for, you know, flying around 80 plus grams and we have these old props. Uh, that's something I should mention is uh, there are props that you can use on this outside of the 48 millimeter King Kong props that I tried. Uh, they didn't yield any better footage, so I wouldn't encourage you to try those in this particular case. But there's some Rotor X props out there that are 1835s. Uh, you can find those from Heli Nation and uh, Airblade. There may be other places, but I'll link those two places down below. If you have this or something like this and you want to investigate kind of a more modern or better prop. So this is my nine-year-old. She wanted some screen time, and I told her that I would give her some screen time. There's actually three other girls sitting on the porch with me, and they're encouraging her to do a dance. You can probably tell that she does not take dance. She's just kind of wiggling herself at me. Uh, but we take off, and we, we fly around, and you'll see that this footage is actually with those King Kong 48 millimeter props, and we have a little bit more jello or vibrations, in my opinion. Uh, you may find it works just fine for you uh, they are some additional props you can try although i will caution you they are press on pops props and these motors do come with 1.5 millimeter shafts and they are very difficult to get on and get them down in the duct area matter of fact i did not and then when i tried to get them off for the sake of reviewing or recording this video I had a really hard time. My fingers got seriously sore trying to get those props back off. A prop remover really didn't help me in the case of removing those 48 millimeter props. So this is the same battery tray dimensions that we've seen time and time again. And I'm starting to wonder if they don't know something that we aren't thinking about is that they've created this tray to limit our battery size to help us stay underneath that amp draw. And so I wanna bring to your attention, this is the stock battery that it came with. And then this is one of the batteries I spent a good amount of my outside time flying. And then inside flights came on these batteries, GNBs, Race Day Quads, and My Life Bows, which come from tinyhoop.com. So if you're looking for batteries, I do have links to, I think, all of these way down in the video description. I kind of have a bunch of stuff linked down there. Um, those links are because a lot of people come asking me questions and I would rather have the information available for you than have to wait for me to respond to your comment. Of course, the stock G&B battery is pretty much just like this one. You see, the battery lead is actually a different length, so maybe they changed battery leads. I don't know. I'm guessing G&B is making a lot more of these batteries because they perform the same. They weigh almost the same. The resistance is very, very close. I'm kind of leaning towards most of these 3S 300 milliamp batteries being G&B batteries. I don't know who else is making those. So in the quick roll, I mentioned that it does come with the control board so you can manipulate the camera. In my footage, I did update the firmware to the January 24th firmware. I'll link that in the video description down below. I have found that that is the one that I am able to flash to the uh, board and it gives me the best results as well as it doesn't have lines that appear. Typically they're horizontal lines that you see in this part of the screen and that part of the screen and the corners there all over the place. So I find that that, that uh, firmware works best for me. Uh, also this little wire that they've got tucked away in there, it actually stays in there pretty well. It's kind of unsightly to see it hanging out here in front and it might give you some trepidation about them getting things you know, in the way of the props and getting it chopped off. We don't want that. Uh, but it does take quite a bit to wiggle it in and out of there. That could change, like if you have your camera angle way down, maybe it comes out easier. I didn't find that to be the case, but you know, each one of these machines is hand assembled, so there could be little variances. Also check your screws, make sure they're good and tight. That will help us ensure that we get the best uh, flight footage that we can. I did mention the 1.5 millimeter prop shafts that they come on these motors, and I suspect this is probably a happy model. It's using a lot of happy model components. We saw in the Mobula HD, the early runs did not have the microphone on it. The specs on Banggood's site show that this is a Cadex Turtle V2. Uh, I, there might be a marking on these boards somewhere, but I just don't know how to tell the difference between the two. Uh, also note the wiring and how it loops around things to try to keep things tucked up and away. I know some people had problems with uh, wiring strikes with the props because things weren't tucked away real well. Uh, so check those things before you take off on your fl first flight to make sure you're not going to end up tearing something up. Uh, in my particular case, I see that they're all pretty tidy. 
but we also have these props down quite a bit lower than we did in the Mobula 7 HD. I did also secure my battery lead down here to a strut just to make sure I didn't have a battery ejection and pull this off the board. But if you see right down here, let me get my screwdriver, this solder joint and that solder joint, this board has through holes on it so your wire actually goes through the board rather than laying on a pad. So that should help us from lifting those pads that people had problems on. I think it was version 1. Um, you do get a sense of the range that I have. This is the FR Sky version. When I do the slow steady flights, you know, I kind of go around the corner from my neighbor's house where that's blind. So I'm going through some portion of his house uh, in order to get that radio link. And I found that the FPV was breaking up. And every once in a while, I would have my, uh, my X light would holler out that the RSSI was low. So your range on this won't be tremendous. But I found as far as my needs, it was adequate. But, but depends on where you're flying, you may find uh, different results. So a few other things I need to cover here. Hopefully everybody's made it here all the way to the end. Uh, down in that box, that is the FPV view. So it is different than the HD footage that you've seen. The HD footage is recorded onto the board itself. This is our slot right in here. And you'll find around over here is the button, which isn't really all that accessible. Can you even see that in there? So that button's not all that accessible. So I set these up using the control board and this little cable connection here to where it starts recording automatically. I believe it's set to auto record. I don't tweak out the settings as far as how the image appears. That's really the only change I make. Uh, you can also put like a call sign and you can have battery voltage and stuff on there. I get rid of all of that. Uh, but it is important for you to know that that FPV view is different than what you've seen in the review so far. Also in this little box over here, I want to show you some of the flips and the rolls. I think it's mainly rolls and how I've got a bobble in there. So you have to be either a lot smoother and try to, as I said, not dead stick those flips or rolls if you're using my PID tune. And the last thing I wanted to look at was just kind of a comparison between these two models that are probably made by Happy Model both. And so we've got a much larger prop. I think we can gain more efficiency and performance and maybe even better balance by using those Rotor X props. There could be other props that will fit on the market, but I don't have any others to try. I tried the ones that I mentioned in the video already, the 48 millimeter King Kong props, and I didn't find that they yielded any better results, which you got to see a little bit of. Also, the ducks are real thin, and I think that's another thing that they're starting to do with these. It's not a lot thinner. Hopefully I can get this in the camera view just so, so you can tell. So they're slightly thinner than they are on the Mobula 7 HD. And that may help us with the yaw washout and other flight performance uh, shortcomings that we've seen in these. Um, I think the draw for these is mainly for people in safety, like you want to film as I did around your family or children. Uh, also, it just reduced the risk that if you hit something that you'll have a prop bend up, although this is a fresh set of props that I did put on here. The set I showed you in the quick roll, that was my original set that I did most of my indoor flying on, and they did get slightly chipped up. Also, I haven't mentioned it, and I'll leave it here with you, is that this canopy houses all the components that aren't the flight controller motors and props. So this is something, I, I'm sure there's some designers out there that could make us one, but I just don't know if it would be as light as this. And when it comes to a Cinewhoop like this, that's real light, it's kind of remarkable that they're able to get both of these down in the weight that they have. But if we can just get this canopy, cause you can see, hopefully you can see, this is the mount point here for the canopy and it has that around all four corners. And then we have the board that's attached to that. And inside the canopy on each side, we have two spots where the VTX mounts and it mounts at a little bit of an angle. So it comes up about like that, about like you see there. And it does sit in there. Although I did have one particular crash where it did knock this loose. So I would encourage you to maybe think about securing this either with some glue to the canopy, something like a welder or E6000 to help that uh, antenna stay intact. Because of course, if your antenna pops off, your video reception goes way down, and you also risk burning out the VTX. Uh, you can see possibly down in there, that is the button for changing the power and the channel that you're on. It's not really accessible. I can't see where you could get much through there. It'd have to be really thin. That hole does somewhat line up if you go down at an angle to it. Uh, so you'll want to use your sticks on the radio to go into the OSD and you select features and then you select uh, the smart audio and you go in there and you change your bands and channels and your power setting that way. That's the easiest way to do it. And it will retain those settings as well. Whereas if you use the button and then you power cycle, you'll lose those changes that you made. So at $155, what do you think?
It's the nice little case and what you've seen in this and the performance is it worth $155 to you if you're interested in this product I'll have a link down in the video description I've also got a coupon code that'll get you 10% off I think it's only one time use so if you've already used it then you might not be able to get it on this particular product but it is there for you to try to use if anybody's curious about the hat I've got on tonight this is uh, Twin Cities TC Minnesota one of my favorite teams from the 90s but they beat my Braves in the 91 World Series Kent Herbeck pulled Ron Gann off of first base he pulled him off. I tell you, he's pulled him off. Oh, and my shirt. I got my uh, Mobula 7 HD shirt on again. Uh, Mr. Wiggles FPV, the designer. You'll find uh, a link down in the video description for that as well. He's got a whole host of stuff. You can get coffee mugs, mouse pads, various things that that manufacturer uh, prints his design on. I think he gets a small stipend uh, from each sale. So if you're interested in quad-related shirts, as I have been recently, you might want to check that link out as well. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise about the UR85HD, please let me know in that section down below. I appreciate your time, and thanks for watching.